Hello, welcome. It is almost two o'clock and I'll be starting my pyrography uh, wood burning tutorial here in just a moment or so. And if you're listening in, watching, or actually going to work with me today, I'm going to share some of this information with you or some of these pieces with you in front of me in just a moment. Okay, I guess it's officially two o'clock. Uh, hopefully you guys have a nice view there. I just got a new tripod, it's pretty awesome. And so I'm actually able to put my phone over the area that I'm working in, so it's really great. And we'll see how it works today. I'll be checking every now and then to make sure that I am in the view area. And if I'm not and you're on and you wanna comment, please feel free. I should have comments turned on. I'm actually checking my computer now to make sure the video is starting on my page and then I'll kind of be watching along um, with the volume down here so let me take care of that real quick and then we'll get started all right I don't see it yet sometimes it's a little delayed in getting started so hopefully it'll pop up here in a minute now we'll be able to see a little bit better. In the interim, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Vivian Davis. I am a professional artist in Norfolk, Virginia. I recently just moved here from Maryland. I've been in the area for about, going I guess on eight months now, time flies. And uh, we've moved by the Chesapeake Bay, which is really nice. I used to run some art programs up in Maryland um, with through my business, Tutoring Art and I ran classes for youth um, and for adults. I ran them through a recreational council. I did some homeschool classes for a group called uh, Granite Classical Tutorials, which is how I actually got started back in the art world. I, I spent some time in finance before that. And I also ran my own programs uh, as fundraisers. Uh, I did different art programs and the most popular one being step-by-step -step painting. So I'm now in Norfolk. I am a resident artist at the DeArt Center and I have most of my art pieces there and some of my materials. So I had to move some of my things over once we started our, um, you know, at home uh, distancing. And so now I, I do have all my pyrography tools here as I hadn't brought them to the center and I thought it might be a good idea to maybe do a demonstration for some of you that have been interested in trying it or maybe some of you that just got started. There are some amazing artists out there. I subscribe to several pages on Facebook and I've gotten you know just so uh, inspired by the artistry uh, with pyrography. And I certainly encourage you to do the same. I did post this live demo um, event on some of those pages. So maybe I have a couple of folks from there. So that's great. And I've been doing this for a while, but I don't do it all the time. I, I was doing it for probably a solid year. Um, but since I run a lot of different art programs and I teach in a lot of different mediums, I sometimes don't get back to the pyrography as much as I'd like to. I do a lot more painting. Um, I also do some sculpting and I, you know, the classes that I've taught can range from drawing to painting, uh, again, to sculpting. Um, I've done uh, work with clay. I've done work with junk sculpture and I've worked with chalk pastels and oils are probably my I don't want to say least favorite medium, but least used medium because for years I worked as a contract scenic painter for theater and I got used to working with acrylics and, and latex and all kinds of interesting materials, which is probably why, because I'm a theater person, that I enjoy working in so many different mediums. But um, anyway, so here I am and I, I've taught a couple classes at the Art Center and now we're shut down. So I decided I was gonna do three sessions a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, from two to four or two to 3.30, depending whether it's on, a, um, sorry, depending on whether it's a workshop 
or a demo. And in this case, I'm doing a demo. I have a little bit of light jazz in the background. Um, if it's too loud uh, and you want to comment, it's too loud. I'll turn that down. It's, um, let's see if I can get Alexa to turn it down. Alexa, volume down. Seems a little loud for me. Okay, so back to where I was. All right, so in front of you right now, you can see um, what I'm going to kind of work on today. I started a series on wood a while back on these wood rounds of, of these dogs in sweaters or scarves or anything that I could think of just for fun. Obviously, I have a little pug sitting here. And I'll bring it a little closer to the screen so you can kind of see some of that. There is color in this. So it's pyrography, which means I did... Uh, put a sketch on here, I did the burning, and then I added some, um, in this case, oil pastels on here, and then I seal it. And so I have a few of those. Um, I also, uh, specifically, I really, really, really love to work on live edge wood. So I'll have, I have a small piece here. I have a lot of bigger pieces on my website. Uh, see, I'll have this small piece here where I actually did a wood burning, but I decided I wanted to do a little bit of relief carving. So I used a Dremel and some tools and you'll kind of see how there's some depth in there. And uh, I put him kind of poking out of there. So, so I do some of that as well. And most of my pieces are on Live Edge Wood. If you go to my Facebook page, Wood Art by Vivian, you'll see more that's available. Um, some of those pieces I've sold, some of them I still have. I don't show the work as often as I probably should. Um, I had been working on building a bigger uh, grouping of these before I did that. Um, these I've done as commissions and um, these dogs and also I just created some of the more popular dogs because people like those. And, and so that's what we're gonna work on today. But I also wanna show you the difference between working on one of these um, rounds, which I actually purchased from Walnut Hollow Walnut Hollow? Yes. And I also am going to show you the tools. Uh, but these are easy to burn on. They're already nice and sanded and smooth. And you don't have to do any work to them at all. Um, on the back, you can even sign or burn your signature and add your card. And then either you could do a wire hanger, I guess. But they're pretty easy to hang with the sawtooth hangers. And so um, you have that. So it's a very nice clean, quick process if you work on these. However, my father-in-law makes live edge furniture, live edge furniture, and he gave me these interesting wood pieces as you see here. And so live edge, all that means is that all this natural, sometimes it still has bark, is left on. Doesn't mean you don't sand it down and you don't make it pretty. This is nice and, nice and, nice and smooth. Um, I don't have any real rough edges. I mean, these could be a little softer, but they're not bad. But they're, ba they're basically nice and raw. Um, the other piece that I'm gonna work on a little bit today and show you, and I've already done a little bit of a sketch on there already, and a tiny bit of burning just to test the heat on my burners, is you'll see this piece here, which is a piece of cedar, I believe. Uh, I have a lot of cedar, and it smells so good. Now, I do suggest that if you're not working in a very open ventilated area that you do wear some type of a face mask. I know those are in um, in high demand right now, but if you already have one or if you have one of the um, more professional face masks that you wear that, some of the woods that you might work on, especially if you're working with live edge wood, can be poisonous to inhale it for long periods of time. So you have to be careful with that. There's actually, if you do a Google search for that, there's a long list of that. I have a list printed here somewhere that tells me, and sadly I should, I don't pay that much attention, but I do typically wear a face mask. I'm not gonna be doing a lot of burning today, so I'm not wearing one today, but if I was, you wouldn't know because I'm not on camera. This piece in front is also another um, live edge wood, you can kind of see. It's just cut off of a bigger piece. And so that's what would happen. My father-in-law would be working on a large piece that he would be creating a table, for example, or a bench. And there's a piece that he needed to cut off. So this may have been the end of a piece. As you'll see here, it's kind of flat and smoother where it was kind of cut off. Um, and so you'll have some natural 
uh, defects in there, like there was a line here, but that doesn't bother me. And so I like to use the wood almost the way it is and then just have a design or an, you know, I love doing wild animals. Um, I will fit them to the piece. So that's why my nice little chameleon fit on this piece right here. And this is also burned and then has a lot. This is heavy with chalk pastel. Um, I wanted some of the lines to show through. And with the burning, it's great because the chalk pastel doesn't cover it completely. It doesn't go in the grooves of the burn. So um, it's a, a nice, a medium to use if you're adding color. I have used uh, acrylic paint as well, so that's not unusual. A lot of people will do that. And I've used colored pencils. I also have some oil colored pencils that I've used um, to do it. So there's that. Uh, so let's see, that's the three pieces. There's one more piece I wanna show you because the other commission I do is portraits. And again, I use these rounds for uh, better pricing. Um, the ones that you saw here, this is an ex a sample, and, um, and sometimes I sell off the samples. It was a price on the back of that, but I think I'm keeping that one. Anyway, and uh, for those of you that are younger, you might not recognize this guy, but um, Indiana Jones. So um, I bas basically just did a little bit of highlighting on him uh, with a white uh, chalk pastel, not chalk, oil pastel. And then I, I did some color in his hat because that's his signature hat. Other than that, the rest that you see, I didn't put any black in here, that's all from the burn, okay? So those are examples. And again, you can go on my Facebook page, Wood Art by Vivian, and you can see more of that. And my tutoring art page that you're currently on will also guide you there. Uh, I made, oh, I didn't, that's right, I did make a sign. So for those of you that want to do this process, not for maybe drawing, or coloring, but you want to create signs. Um, this is another nice piece of spalted maple, and um, on the back you'll see it's very, it's still kind of smooth back here too, but uh, I created my wood art by Vivian sign for when I do show my work, and then I put a little woodpecker on the end since uh, woodpecker kind of is my little symbol for my business there. Okay, and uh, with lettering and with any kind of design, if you're not an artist and you don't draw, you don't have to draw, you can do some type of a transfer process. Now, once it, one of the transfer processes is you can take your sample photo, which in this case, um, I'm doing a little dog that kind of looks like my brand new dog. Um, he's a Jack Russell uh, in this picture. My dog is actually a, well, probably a Jack Russell Chihuahua mix, um, but he looks just like him in the face. And, and I had had this attached here for a while because this was one I was gonna work on. I hadn't done it. And it just coincidentally turned out to be that he looked like him. But anyway, uh, so I just printed this out. And then there is a process that you can heat this up, although the ink needs to be facing the actual, uh, um, wood and you can heat it up and it will transfer but i have never had success with that so i cannot explain that process so if you're on here hoping that i could show you that i'm sorry to say i can't show you that today because what i typically do if i'm drawing something on my own like i create my own design then i will um, draw it on paper and then i will tr i'll still do a transfer onto the wood this way, if I start drawing on here and I mess up, then I have to erase it. And sometimes it doesn't erase well in the wood and then you want, don't wanna to have to go back and sand it. So if you draw it on paper and then you transfer it with transfer paper, then you get a nice neater um, lines on the, the wood. I don't transfer all the details. I use this low Cornell paper. So I'll show you that here real quick. Low Cornell, it's a black paper. Uh, that's just a gray transfer paper, but they, because they also have a white and I'll use that sometimes for my, some of my art programs. Um, and then I will show you how that looks. So it comes in an eight and a half by 11 sheet or so. And one side is much darker than the other side. And you can feel it and you can kind of, it's not gonna rub off on your finger because this is nice quality paper which is my next point. You don't want to buy the cheap stuff from Michaels. I bought these huge 
rolls that are that that are great for bigger transfers the problem is they smear and some of the paper i've bought from michael's also smears so this piece does not smear this low cornell is very it's professional paper and it works really nice so then the other side you'll see doesn't have doesn't feel soft and so i will put this underneath my design and i've already taped this on here i taped it a little too well i'm afraid so I'm gonna pull some of this off so that it lifts up, okay? And then I'll put the paper underneath. Sometimes it's better to use a smaller uh, piece of paper. So you can cut this in half. Um, in fact, I'll show you here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this one. Scissors probably works better, but for lack of time, I'm going to. And I'm gonna actually use the smaller piece because the smaller piece will let me move it around, which will be helpful since this is a round piece of wood, okay? So um, I tape it down to make sure that it doesn't move. And then you can grab a pencil or a pen, either way. And you just want to tra uh, trace just the lines. You'll see on here, I pretty much just did a contour drawing. It's just the outline because He's gonna, my frog is gonna develop based on the shading that I do. And so there's no sense in doing all the lines. This isn't gonna be an illustration with pencil. This is gonna be a wood burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the outline. Um, and if you're following along and you've decided you're gonna do uh, this with me, then you can go ahead and do a transfer of your design. If you don't have transfer paper, you can also take a regular piece of drawing paper, kind of like we did in school when we were younger, and you can put graphite all along the back of that uh, paper. And with that paper, uh, it, it, obviously it's a paper that has to have your design on it if you've printed something. And on that paper on the back, you just scribble a bunch of graphite from your pencil and then you turn, flip it over, you're gonna put it right on the wood again, and then you're gonna do the trace. And then the graphite on the back from the pencil, the lead, will actually transfer onto. Now you wanna check every now and then to make sure you're getting everything you need. Again, I'm not doing every single line, but the scarf had a lot of marks in it. So I went ahead and you can be as detailed as you wish. Um, just kind of where the nose is. And it gives me an idea, or I can come back and fill that in. Some people consider this cheating because I'm not drawing, but this is not a drawing lesson. This is for me to demonstrate pyrography. So I can definitely draw. And if you come to my session on Friday, we're gonna be working with graphite, water soluble pencils. And I'm gonna do a short drawing lesson at the beginning. Okay, now I'm not gonna press down on here because that's actually gonna be shading. I really don't even need that. I can just add it later, but I did a tiny bit. And then the outside of the eye, again, I'm gonna be doing some shading here, maybe where this starts, and to remind me to do the highlight and a little bit here. And since this is a short-haired dog, I don't wanna do a line. Okay, let's see, that should be pretty good. And then, I don't know if I had the graphite out of there. So you gotta make sure that it, it's underneath your um, paper to do it. All right, so now I have some shading here to do, here to do, and you know, the little whisker areas, and, and that's pretty much all you need, I think. That's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so there he is. Now I didn't get the nose, sorry about that, because the paper moved. There we go, make sure I get that nose in well. Okay, now if you make a mistake, or you see you put a line in the wrong place, I'll take this off now. You can use a little bit of sandpaper 
You want to use a finer grit. I think the one I have right now with me is probably a little over 100, but um, you can use a finer grit than that if you uh, want. And I'm going to put this picture aside here for the moment. And uh, so there you have it. So now you have kind of a contour drawing on there, if you can kind of see it. The lighting here isn't the greatest. It's kind of a halfway rainy day. The sun's starting to peek out a little bit, but not quite as much as I would like it. I love natural daylight. And um, all right, so I have that. So I have two things I can work on. And before I start working on those, I'm going to show you the tools that you're gonna need. So when I first started, I started out with a, you know, $35, you know, wood burner from, from Michael's. In fact, it wasn't even mine. It was my daughter's. Um, it's a green tool. And I actually put this on here to, to keep the handle from being too hot. Um, but you'll see it's a green tool and it comes with what you call nibs that go on the end. So this one doesn't have a nib on it. I haven't used it in a while. It was just in my pack. I use it for when I teach in person. So like if you wanna come take a class with me and you don't have your own burner, I always have like a couple extra ones. And this one just has an on off button. You'll see on off, that's it. So there's no heat control, but that's all I used in the very beginning. And a couple of my favorite pieces that you'll see on my website um, was, uh, <clears throat> it's a very big piece of a woman, a young woman who is putting on a slipper and she's against the window. And that one was done in just this simple cheap burner, as well as a dragon that I did on the live edge wood that has a natural hole by his mouth. And that dragon was done with this burner. Um, and that one actually has won awards. So um, it's, you know, it's very useful in the beginning, especially uh, if you want the heat control and for a lot more shading then you're gonna to want to buy uh, one of these others. However, this one, which is hot right now, because I'm gonna demonstrate with this one too, was the next one that I ended up buying. And this one has a small heat control dial right here that you'll see from yellow to red. Right now I have it on orange. So I'm gonna do some shading with this. And so that was the next one I used. And again, this is the little nib, if you can't see that there, and I'm gonna show you all my nibs here in just a moment. Um, that's, that's what comes with it. It's usually, um, I don't know how many come with it, I can't remember, but it's probably a handful of them so that you can have something to have a point, to have a shader. But this point, this nib here, is probably the most, the, the most used of all the ones. So I've created a little box um, in here where I always have some sandpaper and I usually have an eraser and a pencil. I'll take my pencil out. And also all these little nibs, you can buy extra nibs too. Like if you wanna do certain shapes like these, this one has like a crescent moon. I'm not exactly sure why I would use that and I haven't used it, but you can. And then these, this one's the most popular one that I use, which is what's on the uh, other one right now. And that has a point, as you can kind of see that, a point. And then it also has sides, which you can use for shading on the side there. So that's the, that's the one I use the most. And um, let's see if there's another one I can show you that. Uh, actually, now I can't find them, of course. Here's one that has a point point. So if you just want like a really thin line to follow a thin line around, this is, a, this is one you can use too. So it comes with a bunch of those. And the reason I have a little, what do you call that, pliers? Is that pliers? Is because when you're changing nibs, especially with these type of burners, when, you change, when you're working, you don't wanna have to keep turning your burner off. Although it's probably good practice to do that, what I do instead is I turn the heat down and then I use this to remove the existing nib and then I put I take the, the other nib put it in on this and I roll it uh, or twist it right back onto that burner again and that saves me from having to turn it on and off and wait because the other downfall to this type of a burner is that it doesn't heat up immediately so you have to wait and so uh, that's 
a handy tandy thing to have, okay? Uh, oh, I do have a pencil in here. I knew I had one, okay? So that's my little kit, which is primarily for the other, bur this burner here, but um, the one I just showed you, but I use it for, you know, I have other things in there that I, you know, could use with my other burner, okay? So now I'm gonna show you my professional burner real quick. And we've already established that to do all this, you've gotta have a design, you can do a transfer, you can do a sketch. Um, the burner that I have, which you can see here in the, um, the screen, and, and it gets warm, it's real warm when I touch it. It's not hot, but it's warm. That's how I know it's on the red lights and everything. I have two pens on here. Um, and this one is the one I use uh, the most to do lines. Um, you can see it has a little bit of a point. It's not as sharp as the nib on the other burner, but um, I, can, I can go wider, I can go thinner, depending on which direction I go. And that is one of my favorite pens. And then the other pen that I tend to use the most, which uh, right now is not on, is this one, which you'll see on the end, sorry about that, I have paper in my hand, um, has a little bit of a round um, end to it. It's just a piece of wire basically. And that lets you do some shading by using the side. And, and if I needed to do a quick line, I could use the very end of it, the very tip of it to do a line. So I love this piece too. This, this burner, allows you to use two pens at once. They're not both heated up at the same time. Uh, this one's the one I have on. And the way I know is there is a button here um, that tells me the burner's on. So zero and one, it's on. And then over here on the other side, there's a burner that says A and B. So this side is A, this side is B, and right now the red light is on the A side and that's how you know that it's on. So when I wanna switch, all I have to do is switch over to B. And within uh, you know less than a minute, probably even less than a minute, even a half a minute, it will turn on, it will be hot, and it works a lot quicker than working with, um, again, this burner, which I'm gonna uh, demonstrate initially, okay? So that's the burners. Uh, these burners, have a variety of pens that you can use. I only own three because it's the only ones I I like using. Uh, I will maybe experiment sometime down the road. This is also a shader. It has it looks like a little cup on the end, and this is really good for shading bigger areas because it would take you a long time if you did it with the other one. And so this is good for big shading areas. And so I'm not going to do any of that today. So I just kind of set it off to the side. And then you just kind of switch them out. This one with the this cord with the red is a lot um, faster than this one, so this will heat up a lot faster. I feel like I get better heat out of it too for some reason, but I haven't bought another red one, so I still have a black cord on the other one, and that that's fine. If I need to change the tip, then all I have to do is pull the pen out of there, and I could switch the tip, and I could just work on one side. I wouldn't even have to switch to the other side if I preferred. So either way is fine, okay? So the the one the pointed um, tip that I told you is called a ball tip. And a friend of mine who inspired me to do the wood burning to begin with um, had provided some information and taught a class for me for one of my programs a while back. And this is one of the things, I think she gave me this. I, I may have printed it out, but I'm, I'm fairly certain. Nancy Horn, she's a very talented artist and she's the, the one who inspired me. Um, she does a lot of scenic work and uh, portraits and just very, very talented woman, but I believe she's retired from this now. So um, the, the tips that I have are the ball tip. And if you can see, if I bring it a little closer, some of the lines that you can do, you can get really tiny, tiny dots. You can get really, really thin lines. That's really nice. Um, there's the looped lip. I think it's looped tip, which I don't have. That's probably the next one I would get because it actually lets you create even thinner lines. Um, so I like that. I have the other one, the spear shader. That's the one that I showed you that I'm not currently using that looks like a spoon. 
And then this is also, there's a curved shader and I've never used that one. So I can't testify to how well that one works. Um, but that's another choice. And this, um, I printed off of L, uh, I forget her name, but uh, maybe it's Laura, Irish, lsirish.com. Uh, she's a really, really good pyrographer. Oh my goodness, some of her work is just stunning. So that's a good person to follow if you're not following anyone right now. She does some gorgeous work. Um, and I, so I, I, I pulled all this information off her website and it explains the different pen tips and it tells you what they do. And then some of this work actually off to the side, I believe is her work too. Um, so anyway, that's my printout. So if you were in person, I would give you a copy of this. So let me put that aside. Okay. So other than that, um, the reason I keep sandpaper handy is just in case I make a mistake, um, it is possible to sand off a little bit of it. If you burn too deep, that's not gonna work really well. So you have to be careful. It's not a really big forgiving medium, but also remember that you can take artistic liberty and that no one's going to look at your illustration and judge it because it, they're, you know, they're going to look at it and, and, and it's how you designed it. In fact, if you give an artist, three different artists, the same photograph and say, here, do this, uh, you know, draw this or, or burn it on wood, you're still gonna get three different designs. So we should never stress out about little mistakes sometimes as, um, who was it that used to say that? Bob Ross, they're happy little mistakes or happy, happy, no, I forget what you call it now. Someone can, someone can tell me this later. <laughs> you can comment if you know what I'm talking about. Happy, but not, I know it's happy little clouds, but he said something else. They're not mistakes, they're, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, the other thing I would recommend is that you have a small piece of wood, any kind of piece of wood. You can see that I, I sometimes I test my um, pens with a piece of wood just because sometimes they're really they, especially when you first turn it on they get really hot the first time you burn it gets really hot and so you'll burn potentially burn a hole deeper than you would like when you first hit that wood if you're not gentle but if you do your first strike on another piece of wood especially when you're learning then you're guaranteed not to burn your design Okay, so I had used this to demonstrate, I don't know if you can see that real well with kind of an eye. I was doing the eye of an animal and then I never finished it. So I just decided I was gonna use this. Um, I had another piece of wood I was using, but I burned most of it. So now, um, so this is now my backup piece of wood. And that's again, just to test every now and then. Um, so again, even if you are, have been doing this a long time, it's very easy for that first strike to be way too hot. Take a sip of water and then I'll keep going here. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the dog. Uh, I usually have a really good photo reference up on my computer screen, but I don't have it today. As I said, I started this a while back and honestly completely forgot to find my photo. But I have this piece of paper, which is enough to get me started. And I'm looking for my video online again um, to see if it's live, but I'm not seeing it. I hope I've started in the right place. It's really strange that I'm not seeing my video. Nothing's going. I know I started. I am uh, a novice at this Facebook Live th thing, so Sometimes I think I have everything just perfect and then something stumps me. So I just came back out and I'm going back in. Ah, there I am. Yay, found it. That's all I need to do. I need to refresh my screen. So sorry for that delay. Um, you can laugh at my technical ability. Uh, all right, so next we are going to start this. So I'm going to go ahead and use this burner that I used to use. And still use every now and then. I like to do it for lettering. And I'm going to scoot this one out of my way a tiny bit. I'll pull it back into the screen when I'm working with it. And then I'm going to start to show you um, how to get started. So remember I said you want to test this 
um, because this first time when I touch, it's going to be hotter. Now I have it on a shading mode, so it's not real hot right now, but see how the first line I did was really nice. The second one, not as dark. You have to kind of learn when to press down and when not to press down. So you can practice some of that and that's why you want to have an extra piece of wood. Okay. So I'm just showing you some lines to start. Now, since I'm gonna go ahead and work with lines, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little hotter. I'm gonna go into my red area, maybe not all the way to the end, but just enough so that you can see uh, the lines better. And I like to start out light and then get a little darker. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and kind of create a little bit of an outline. So I'm gonna follow the line on his head and kind of follow it around. I didn't fill in his ear all the way here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of fake it for now. And I'm not working straight down with this angle, uh, with, you know, uh, t nib. I actually work from the side a little bit. So when I come in here, cause I'm gonna end up shading in here anyway, I'm gonna um, kind of just rub it in just a tiny bit. It's gonna be dark in that ear. So I don't have to do a line in that case. Since I'm gonna have a shadow, this whole area here is gonna be dark. So I will just darken this. And you'll see now I'm just kind of rubbing very quickly. If you hold your burner in place for too long, it will burn dark. And if you don't want a dark area, you have to press down lightly. In this case, I'm working on a dark area. I've got this on a high setting. And I'm just gonna still move it around fairly quickly so I don't create one of the dreaded black dots, okay? because I know that part's gonna be dark. And then I'm gonna come out here. And he's a short-haired dog. You don't wanna make those lines just perfect. So, and the nice thing is, is that once you finish this, if there's any pencil showing, you can take an eraser and erase some of that. Okay, so that's the end of his ear. And then I gotta create this little curved area here that I didn't have in the picture when I first started. And again, I'm just gonna fill a little dark underneath there for shadow, okay? He has a brown ear, so I'm, I'm gonna get darker with this ear at some point, but right now I'm just kind of starting on the outline. And I'm gonna come in here. And again, this is gonna be more of a shadow, so rather than a line, I'm gonna move in here, kind of move it back and forth. And here. Maybe a little too hot for that area, so I think I'm gonna avoid that for now. And then I'm gonna fill out this line here. And watch your fingers when you're working. And you don't wanna hold your um, your burner on uh, too long. Okay, I'm gonna push this back. I'm gonna move this over and kind of work down here. If you can see, uh, it'll just it's a little easier for me rather than holding it. So right now, since I have this burner on a very hot setting, I'm gonna work in only dark areas and a little, like I said, a little bit of the outline. So I'll come down here and he's got a lot of white fur in here, so I don't want to, um, I don't want to do just a line. I'm just going to do a little bit of, a little tiny, tiny lines. I just kind of filled in there. And then I'm going to go down the neck, which is also white. And I'm going to go lightly, give him a little bit of a hairy edge. Okay, and then with that scarf, that's gonna be nice and solid, so I can give it a nice solid line for now. So 
So if you don't draw and you just want to practice, you know, with an existing photograph, do the transfer and just do the outlines, you know, you can certainly create this more like an illustration. Maybe even a simple, even simple illustration just by following the lines that you transfer on. I know people who also burn and create signs. Um, I've done that before. I said I create my own sign here. I've done a couple bigger signs. And lettering is the same difference. You would just print out the lettering that you need or if it's a logo, print out the logo, the size that you need it. You'll do a transfer. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to do a more distinctive transfer. So you can get the logo just the way it's supposed to be. Now I'm shading in here dark because again, there's a dark shadow in my picture. And I'm again, I'm going by this paper picture for now, just to give you an introduction to this tool, and then I will work with the other one. And you'll see now, I am following along and I never go straight. Now you could, but my fear, it doesn't drag as easily as you'd like. So if you turn it and you go straight down, you're more likely to burn deeper. And I don't burn real lightly. I do burn a little deeper than some, but I don't like to have those little dark marks that happen when you first set it down. So you wanna have a very light touch. You can always go back and make things darker. You can always go back and make things deeper, but it's harder to get rid of it once you've done it, okay? So I'm coming in here and I'm just working on some of the lines in his scarf. You guys can see, and I'll get a little closer. Maybe you can see how I'm doing this. Gotten to the side. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up here, and there's a little bit of a shadow where the scarf hits his neck. follow this line out. We're going to go about 90 minutes, so we're only going to go to about 3.30. That's not enough time to complete an entire illustration or drawing or painting, as you want to call it. So this is just for demo purposes. If um, I get a request from a group of people that would like me to actually do uh, start to finish, you can spend a little extra time. I can show you some other techniques. This is just a beginning class or demonstration. Okay. So you can see I've mostly just done the outline, did a little bit of shading. I'm gonna work on the eye. Most of the time I work in the eye first anyway. Um, but with this eye, and even in the in this bad printout that I made, uh, you can kind of see where there's some different color tone in there. So I'm not going to uh, do any of the lighter shading, but right in the eye area right here, I got a little bit of darkness. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then it's almost like he's got a little bit of eyeliner on right underneath the eye and then up here as well. Okay, so he has some eyeliner. And then right around his cornea, it's dark. And then I will finish that up with my other burner. Um, and then don't forget, there's a little highlight there. So I just kind of did a little light line. Okay. Um, 
Another place where it's dark on here is right around his nose. So there's like a, a dark line there. And inside his nose, do you see how that burns really, really easily? So you have to be careful. And then right underneath his mouth, there's some shading. And it goes a little darker, but not as dark as this, so I'm going to wait. Then I'll set a lighter setting. Actually, that nose part goes a little deeper. Okay. And again, he's a white dog, but I'll give him a tiny bit of an edge here. So notice that I'm going very lightly. See the difference? in that particular line here versus how I got dark in there. And that's just, again, with the touch of your um, burner being a little bit light-handed. So this is one of these things where you can watch me, but you've got to try it yourself in order to really feel the difference. And when you first start doing it, you know, it's gonna be, uh, hard to manage potentially, so um, do something simple is what my recommendation is. And then you can come back and get a little more complicated every time you work with it some more. Now, some people are naturals. Once you get the feel for how hard you need to press down, it won't be too hard. this ear off here. I'm going to get the outline done on him and then we're going to work with the other burner. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of my frog too. So a little bit of an outline. His eye is over here and it's very dark. And he almost looks like he has a little eyelash here. But I'm not going to fill it in completely yet. The other thing I can show in another demonstration down the road is how to work with the oil pastels to fill in color. I may even do a color class for that. I set up these sessions because I realize people are kind of cooped up. Some people are cooped up at home. I know there are a lot of people out there working as well. Um, some of them risking their lives, and especially in the medical profession, but um, you know, than the rest of us. Um, and even if you work from home and you need a break, I thought this would be kind of fun. And watch some demos, maybe participate in some of it. I do my step-by-step uh, step step painting sessions on Facebook Live. I've done two so far, and I'm gonna be doing another one next week, probably on Wednesday. On Friday, I'm doing a drawing class using um, water-soluble graphite. So we'll start out, and if you don't have those pencils, you can just use standard pencils. Just follow along. And again, that's two o'clock on Friday, okay? So I've got most of his outline done. Um, I don't have anything on it, you know, down here, but again, he's a white dog, so I'm not gonna have a whole lot down here, except maybe a little bit of texture to show his short hair. And then this scarf has a lot of lines in it. So I will need to adjust my burner to get the different shades because I'm not using color necessarily, or I can put a light line and come back with my oil pastels and actually put some color in there, which I'm probably more inclined to do anyway. So the only thing that I would be doing in here um, is just kind of creating some of those lines, creating the shadow like here where the little knot hits the scarf. 
Can you guys see that? I'll put a little bit of a shadow. Okay. And then maybe underneath, I'll go a little heavier. Notice now my line got a little wider. a line here. I wondered what that came from. So that kind of goes up here and then kind of wiggles in. Okay. And this piece actually goes over a little. There's a little bit of a shadow. And I'm finishing my lines. Tell it's a dog, right? Now I gotta work on the shading. Okay, so I'm going to show, I showed you a little bit of shading with this. Um, I'm gonna work with the other burner now, so you can kind of see how that works. A little bit of shading here, a little bit of shading here, and I'm working on the side, again, at the side of this tip. I forgot underneath the neck. He's white, so he doesn't have much shading. I'm gonna take a little artistic liberty in there. And then again, just maybe a little here, just so you can see the difference, okay? A little bit. All right, that's a good start. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And if I wanted to do some lighter shading, I would just lower the heat. Uh, I can go from red to orange to kind of a, I don't know, deep yellow to yellow and basically off all the way off turned off there is a little piece I'll show you this i have it taped down to the uh counters i'm working on a kitchen counter right now for more space and and this kind of sits in there like that so you don't have to worry about burning your counter table if you're working on a tablecloth it would be fine that'll sit there all right so that's this burner Scoot it out of the way. I've turned it off. And move on. And I have about 40 minutes to show you a little bit of shading with the other burner. I need my tape out of here. Ah, all right. So I'm going to scoot these things aside real quick. And I'm going to scoot him over a little. And I'm going to pull out the frog to work on. Everybody see the frog? Now that one I have a nice um, photograph up for this picture, for this frog. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do a little bit of line with this one. Uh, and then I'll do a little bit of shading on both. And so you'll kind of see it on both that way, all right? I'm gonna start out with my, uh, the, um, I always forget the name of these tips, the uh, ball tip, sorry about that. I'm going to take a sip of water, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. I want to test my pen because you're going to see how hot it is when I first start. See how that burned? I don't know if you could see the smoke rising from that. See the smoke? That's actually kind of wild. Let me do it one more time. All right, so you don't want, if you don't want to burn deep, you have to touch lightly to start, okay? And when I touch lightly, see the difference? All right, I don't have it on the highest. The heat goes from one to 10. I don't even know what one does, but for shading, you're gonna use probably one through 
seven, maybe eight. Um, and then if you want a nice dark line, you have to start going into the eight, nine, 10. Okay, so I test it out and then I set that down and then I'm gonna come over to this and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, I love this now that I'm used to it. When I first started using this, after using the other burner, it was very strange. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even like it at first. And I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done? I spent this money, because this is a much more expensive burner, but I was determined to get used to it. And I did some practicing and I got better. So um, I wouldn't run out and buy the expensive burner if you've never done this before. I would buy the less expensive. I would get used to how it feels to work lightly, um, to burn darker, to do the shading, get used to all that first, even though this is gonna feel different, uh, but it will get you that basic practice you need. And then you grab one of these and use this a little bit, practice a little bit, and then you're gonna love this, okay? So I'm gonna come up here, and I've already done a little bit of outline. I'm gonna come in here and do a little tiny bit of outline. I'm not going to see how much smoother this goes. Now, this is a different wood, but this is not any smoother than this other wood. They pretty much feel about the same. I sanded this down. In fact, this might even be a little rougher, but this just flows really well. Now, you have to adjust with live edge wood. Like for example, this wood here on the side is gonna be much more gentle than this darker wood in the center. So when I burn on the side, I have to be very carefully very careful, so I'm gonna actually use the tip of my pen and go very slowly around there. And when I come back in here, I don't have to be as careful. Okay, now I wanna fill in dark, even though this isn't a shader specifically, I'm not shading a huge space. Um, there is a highlight in here that I'm gonna leave in here and kinda of go lighter. And then all along out here, I can go ahead and get darker. But this one feels more like a drawing pen or a drawing pencil. All right. So I can shade small areas a lot quicker. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go into his mouth. And you, so once in a while, you're gonna see some burning. You gotta start out light. And he's got a little bit of shading in here. Okay. Now I think on the, on my event page, I gave you guys the photo reference for this frog. So if that's what you want to practice with, you can do that. It is just off the internet, off one of these free picks thing. I think I gave you guys that, I don't remember now. All right, and I'm gonna do a little bit of shading here. And so you can kind of shade with this. Now the way I can shade uh, is like you would do with a pencil. And so instead of using my um, scoop shader or my other um, wire tip shader, I am just kind of doing some lines like I did with a pencil. I'm gonna do the same thing here. And then I'll come back and I'll do more later. But you'll see how, is if I had a pencil in my hand, I'm just shading, kind of using that crisscross much like a pencil. So this burner, the tips are great. If you love to draw, this is part of the reason I love um, wood burning, is, is I focus more on the drawing than anything else, and I really enjoy that. Now there's a little bit of texture on this frog on his neck, so I'm not going too deep with that shading because I'm actually gonna try to do a little bit of that. And the shading here um, 
that's supposed to be blue. And if I wanna come back and put color on him, then I'm just going to do a little bit of that only. Um, so he's got some shading in here. And, and then it's, he's got what looks like little circular patterns. So I'm gonna create those because they actually are are white and and then I can shade the rest if I wanted to. I'm gonna get a little darker right by his arm. Okay, and then the crease. And then here, the edge of his arm. So little frog arm, okay. Um, it's also much darker in here. You guys see that okay? Yeah, and then there's little dots. Little tiny white dots. So I'm going to work around that. And then there is a line here that we didn't put in. Which is much darker. So now I'm gonna press down a little bit more, just in that crease. Okay. All right, um, in here on the chest, now this guy is up against a leaf. So I'm gonna do a little bit of shading there. And I'm showing you shading, even though I'm using this, because like I said, I use this tip for, I, I like to use one tip. So if I can get away with it, I do. And then for areas that I need to do more shading, like when I work on what this is supposed to be a leaf, um, then I'm gonna wanna use that. For bigger areas, definitely wanna use the bigger shader. Okay, there's a shadow right underneath here. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade that real dark. And then I'm gonna come in here so you can kind of see the way I'm holding this is like a pencil. And it's so much fun. And if you're in a well ventilated area, like I'm in a really large room right now, I don't have to worry about as much of the fumes. Although I would suggest running like a ceiling fan or a fan um, if it's directly, um, in a, if you're in a small area especially, you could have a fan blowing almost directly on you, which would keep you from inhaling too many fumes. And then the best course of safety is to wear a mask. Okay. So see how I've done so much so far. I didn't, I guess I took me a little longer to do the outline on the dog, I think. So in here, he's got nose hole. In here, he's got nose hole. And then there's some shading in here, which I'm not gonna use this for because I wanna have, I wanna go light and up in here. It's actually darker on the top of the eye. And he's got real dark areas around the eyes. Very black. So I'll press down a little harder. I'm using that hotter setting. And I forgot to finish his eyelid here. So that's real dark. So you see, I've got some shading here. Um, this will also be, but I'm gonna use my shader and show you that here in just a moment. And I'm just gonna go around and do a little bit of the edge here. And there's also a very dark shadow between him and this leaf. More so on the leaf. I'll do a little bit, give him a little bit of texture there. And then go darker in here. Very dark, right on the edge, very dark. So I'm not holding it down for very long. I don't want a deep groove 
Um, I'm moving constantly, but I go back and forth in the same area. Okay. Do the leaf line here and again remember gentle if you're working on live edge wood be aware of what your wood is like I'm gonna go ahead and do this cross line of another leaf I just wanted something subtle on these piece of wood okay all right where are we outline do I want to do more outline yes I'll do a little bit more. In fact, I'll do a little bit of shading underneath his hand. So rather than just doing what looks like an outline, I'm actually going to do a little dark shade right here. Doing working on the little areas. And then he's got a color difference here. So we're gonna worry about that with the shader. And I'm gonna go ahead and outline his web feet here. Web feet, oh, they're webbed. I'm gonna kind of look about them. several of these pieces so I'm using this one just for demonstration oh, I'm gonna hang this one in my house I think he's got some little creases there in his hand and then there's a color difference in here um, in his in his uh, hand I'm going a little dark. I shouldn't go too dark there. And I'll bring it up to what looks like his elbow. And there's a little white area too. Okay, so nice and light. And a little line there. And this, this is his leg. It's hiding behind the leaf. And it actually has a color difference down here. That's shadow here. Which is darker. And then there's a color difference here. And another shadow here. You don't see very well what's going on there, but it gives you an idea. Okay, and you don't see his body too well right here, but I think there's a little bit of his body in there, so I'm going to include that. And then we're going to show you with the shader on some of that. So that's my, um, a little bit of the shading, that's a little bit of the uh, outline. I'm going to set that down. And I want to go ahead and demonstrate, although I could turn the other burner on, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate changing pens. So I'm going to pull this out. It's going to be hot for a moment, so you want to set it down where the tip isn't touching anything, but it should cool off pretty quick. And then I'm going to grab this other one that's plugged in, that's not on. I might take that off. That was weird. Okay, take this off. Okay, set it aside and I'm gonna plug this one in here. Now it should be hot momentarily, and then I don't have to go back and forth. And sometimes when I'm only working with two pens, I'll do that. Um, if I'm working with three, it's ideal because then I can just switch one off. And now you'll see when I touch my little test board here, it's already hot. It's not as hot as it's gonna be, but there's a little bit of heat in there, okay? And if you just press down straight, you're gonna get these little upside down U's. We don't want that, we want a shade. Um, so I'm gonna adjust my uh, burner a little bit. To show you a little bit of shading. 
usually when you want to burn in bigger areas, I mean shade in bigger areas, you'll see you can kind of rotate this around and you just hold it right on top of the wood and you'll be able to get a bigger area. Sometimes these things get gunked up though. So I probably need to sand this one down a little bit because the heat won't transfer very well if um, you have a lot of residue on there. But you'll see how quickly I did that shading right there. So, um, so now we're gonna come over here. And for these bigger, for the bigger areas on his chest, that's what I'm gonna use to shade. And I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit, maybe to a seven. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start in the darkest area just to test this and maybe even get a little darker right there underneath his chin, chin, like he has a chin, underneath his mouth. And then there is a shadow that runs down here. So I'm gonna kind of gently bring some of the color down. You'll see how much lighter that is and it gives me more room to work with, with this bigger shader. And the, interestingly enough, this wood gives me a little text, natural texture, which is what this frog has in his, uh, underneath his neck, and so it works great. I may not have to go in and actually create my own texture. It gives me a nice texture. Now he's got, let's see, in the arm here. It's a little darker. And then remember how I showed you that little U? If you have a tool that will give you that, in this case, because he's got, it looks like little, almost like little scales. I'm gonna use the side of this burner. And I don't know, maybe, or I could kind of do it like this. Just give him a few lines in there. Just to you insinuate. It's hard to see. Hard to see. Might need it to be a little smaller, but it's okay because he's actually very light there. So, for example, I did this really dark, and now I go, oh, I wanted it lighter, right? So I'm gonna go in my handy dandy little toolbox, and I have a lot of, of these sandpapers. I folded them really, really tiny, so that I can come in here and I can go, I made that area way too dark. Now I can come in here and sand a little bit, See how I just took some of that darkness out? Even if I have to sand the, a whole big area and go over some of the areas I did, it cleans it up. And that's about as close as you're gonna get to erasing. If I burned a lot darker than that, I'm not sure I would have been able to do it. So um, you have to make sure your, your gentle touch until you have exactly what you're attempting to do and then from there, you can, um, you know, experiment, you know, obviously, and, and go with deeper areas if you're comfortable. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this again. And in here, I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness. Okay. And then this area is now lighter. And what the effect that I was trying to go for, but I was pressing down too hard, was just like these little, almost like mermaid scales without getting too dark. I need my reading glasses, I think, for this small work. Getting older. Those of you that don't know me, know me. I'm not exactly a spring chicken. Haha. <laughs> Been around a while. Had a very interesting life so far. This by far is my favorite part. I love being an artist and I love showing other people how to be creative like that. And so this brings me lots of joy. 
lots of joy. Okay, it's also much darker in here, but I went ahead and I created a little texture, so I'm just gonna come in, do a little bit of shading. Uh, and then in here, where I started to do it on his chest, he's got a little line that comes out from under the arm here, and another one that goes here. And notice that I'm using the shader, but I'm using the very tip to do some lines. You can go back and forth without having to constantly switch your pen. So far, pretty good. I think he's pretty good. All right, so he is a blue tone here, and I may end up putting some blue, so I'm not gonna go, I, I may put a little bit of texture is all I'm gonna do. Because I love using color, so sometimes I use the, I do these um, as just straight wood burnings, but then other times I just love Love, love adding a little bit of brightness to my my illustration. Um, all right, let's see. We're gonna go up top a little bit. And this is where I was talking about. I'm gonna lower my shader now. I'm going from a seven down to a six, maybe a little bit below that. I'm gonna test it to make sure that it's not too hot for what I wanna do. You'll see it's much lighter now. I almost have to press down hard to get any color at all, right? Which probably means that I need to clean this off. But the key is to just kind of do circles. I may have to clean this one off a little. Sorry about that. Let me turn this up a tiny bit, which will probably solve my problem. Or I could switch my shader, but I don't really feel like it. All right, that's light enough. Because all I want is a little shadow right here on top of his head. here um, right above the eye and the same thing I want to finish off the shading over here where it's not too dark okay and here between his eye and the nose put a little bit of shading with pyrography, I'm gonna give you a few tips to send you off here in just a few minutes. You can't expose your art to too much light because the lighter that you um, do your illustration, the more likely it is to fade. So you wanna keep it out of light. Now, I suspect that with most people and their art, they don't have it in bright sunshine. But in this case, you really, really need to be careful. So when you do this, especially if you do it for a client, give them that warning. Say, hey, you know what? Sometimes I actually have a piece of paper somewhere that I have attached um, to the packaging or the back of the commission to explain to people that they just don't want to put it in the light. Now I burn pretty dark, so it would take a while before it would fade, but I don't want it to fade at all if I can avoid it. Put some shade here. Okay, see how that's a little bit lighter than what I was working with. This is the dark, and I'm going over it a little bit, but that's my lighter shading. And then I can go through and I can give him those little areas that make him look more 3D. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at here for now. Um, the eye, actually I'll do a little bit of the eye, has some veining. 
So I can actually use this and I can turn it and I can do a few of those lines and I, want, I don't want them to be too dark. It looks like here. There's a little bit of veining. And then his eye is red. So if I'm gonna go back and do the red and with a little bit of yellow, then I could turn this down a little bit because I'm actually getting uh, darker on this wood than I did on that sample piece of wood. So I wondered, and I can fill in a little bit of texture. And in here, there's like a change in color. So I'll do it, I'll shade it here. Um, and then if I want to add color, I will. But otherwise, this area is going to be the red area. Okay, that's one eye. And this is also a highlight, but it was not quite white. It was just lighter than the outside. So I'm gonna come back, I'll go over this again, and I'll make this part even darker, and that will stand out a lot more. Okay, for his eye. Okay, so that's the start of that. Oh, I don't know if I was out of the viewfinder there. Oh, Alexa just talking to me. She thinks I was talking to her. Okay, so that's a good start. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, read you off a few tips here in just a moment. Um, I didn't do much shading on the dog, so let me grab him a little bit so I can just kind of show you the difference in, in some of the some of the texture because this is a round versus uh, my live edge. Now I'm on, let's see, I'm between five and six. So if I wanna do some lighter shading in here, I'm just gonna turn this, this one works more like that piece of wood that I was practicing on. So I'm gonna do short, slow, round movements. And you'll see I got a little bit of color in there. I want to go out a little further. Okay. Um, same thing in here. I mean, it's darker. But it's not as dark as the black, so I'm just going to go lightly. Rotate this thing around. Clean this tip <laughs> before I go back to this. And I'll finish this guy up within the next week or so. So I'll post it on my page if you guys want to come back and look and see how it turned out. Sometimes it's nice to see how things begin and then come back and see the end result. So I have to bring up the heat on this round because that live edge wood was a little softer wood than this is, okay? But you'll see I did the three little areas that I added a little bit more shading to. I'm gonna half that up in here too where I don't wanna go too dark. but I'll have to likely increase the heat just a tiny bit, okay? But you'll see I got a little bit in there done, okay? So that's two examples on the wood round and the live edge wood. Um, we have about uh, six minutes left, and um, I have one person I think that I see chimed in. Um, oh yeah, you have a hard time doing eyes, yes. I, I think part of it is because you really have to pay attention to the different colors in the eye. You know, dogs typically have dark eyes, um, unless you have a husky, maybe you have a light blue eye. But they, um, 
they may have brown eyes and then you have to create the tone between the brown or a light gray area and the black area. So you really have to um, work on the, the contrast. So I'll start out really light and then I'll get darker in the areas that I need to get darker. Okay, in this case, his eyes brown. This is actually going to be a darker area. But I want to use my true photo reference to do it. Right now, I'm just using this copy and it doesn't give me the true colors. But you're going to see that this edge would be much darker. This would be a little bit lighter and this even lighter to, than that. And because you're working in, in, in dark tone, I mean, and, um, in brown tones, rather than you're not working with black even, you're working with brown tones. And so if you want to come back and put color in the eye, if you want to come back and pop that eye by putting white in the highlight, that's not a bad idea. And I, I think I did it with, yes, I did it with the pug. You'll see with the pug, I, I, I have a little brown here, I have some black here, and then I used a teeny tiny bit of white. Um, there's even, a, it, he was reflecting a little bit of green, so I put some green in there, strangely enough. But it brought his eyes more to life. So, um, so you really have to pay attention. Um, if you're not gonna be working in color, then you really have to assign those uh, tones. Um, Oh, those brown tones uh, because even though I kept saying to everyone oh yeah this is black this is black it's not really black black it looks more like a brown okay um, all right so some of the tips I'm gonna read off for you actually it's not there we have about four more minutes um, and some of these I some of these I you know are you probably heard are pretty obvious um, so a lot of people have asked a lot of questions about things and and so these are just tips that were on a, a page that i subscribe to so i'll start out at the top it says uh taking photos of pyrography can be frustrating because of the flash glare kicking back off the irregular and shiny surfaces of the work to help tape a few layers of tissue paper over the flash to diffuse the light um, it also says Vaseline can be carefully smeared on the flash window, although I wouldn't suggest that, especially if you're using your cell phone. You might, uh, I'm not even sure an iPhone can survive that. Um, a clean nib is essential. And, I, and I, I think I was stressing that as I was working with this because I'll put this kind of closer to the camera and you'll kind of see, it'll start to have like a dull, dark color on the edge. That just means it's got some residue. So I need to clean that one. I haven't done this in a little while, so I didn't do that before I started today. Um, it's a skews and cutting pen should also be kept sharp. A buildup of carbon and muck will hinder good heat transfer and smooth travel of your nib across the surface. And I showed you that. Um, photocopies and laser prints can be used to transfer images to your wood. Um, to burn, print the image. This is the this is how what I was t uh, describing that I have never been able to do before. It says print the image, place face down on the wood, and gently iron the back. There is actually a tool in the kit that uh, you get when you first um, if you use that other tool uh, that has this piece right here, and that is the piece that's supposed to get hot and do the transfer, but I don't know. I don't know why it didn't work well for me, and so I, I've just never done that. I just always use uh, transfer paper. Uh, but it says, print the image, place face down on the wood, and gently iron the back. Perhaps even a better way is to rub the back with turpentine or min mineral spirits. And remember though, the image is a reverse of the original. Oh, okay. You can also print your image in reverse and that will work. Um, the heat control of your nib can depend on many things. The temperature dial and the size of the nib you have attached to the most obvious. There is, however, one other non-mechanical method of heat control, your breath. Think of this as the fine tuner of your heat control. I will often gently blow on the nib to take the edge off of the heat. See, that's something that I've never done, but I knew you could. I just 
never think about it. Um, if I need to tone it down a little bit while working, uh, this is especially useful when working with a shader and doing very subtle grades of tone. While working, if you get a patch that needs a softer heat, you simply ever so softly blow down on the nib rather than taking your pen off the work and turning the dial down. When you need to have the full heat back to the nib, simply stop blowing. It's also useful for taking the edge off the nib heat before touching down on the surface to avoid the dreaded black blob, which we talked about. And if I look through here, I probably have a couple of those. I think I had one here. Um, and I think that's the only place that I feel it because you can feel them when you go back and feel over your work You'll know and sometimes you can see them if you press down too hard um, Let's see what else is good texture don't think of your wood burning tool as just a hot pen or pencil the burning tool is Is one of the few writing implements that can texture as well as draw I'm looking at a perspective subject. Don't just think of it in terms of light and dark tones. Think of it also in terms of texture. And we talked about that when I was working on the frog because even sometimes the natural wood can help you create some of that texture. So, uh, so take advantage of that. Uh, and then practice. Um, and practice really does help a great deal in perfecting your pipe pyrography. Pyro, pyro, and we talked about this, is not just a visual thing, it's also a feel thing. It's not like picking up a pencil and drawing a line. Practice will help you feel what you were doing and improve your work by leaps and bounds, okay? Uh, monochrome is a term you'll often hear in pyrography. It technically means a picture done in a range of tones in one color. For us, it means burning a picture without the use of color. Of course, at the end, I typically cheat because I love adding color to my pyrography. Um, polyurethane varnish tends to yellow wood, creating a honey glow, but also causing the picture to lose some subtle contrast. So water-based varnish looks almost milky in the can, but it allows the wood to stay closer to its raw color. Um, fading, we talked about that. Um, it's a good idea to add a UV protective additive in your varnish or finish, and that'll pr help prevent fading as well. Um, tracing is far better to use graphite paper than carbon paper. I showed you the graphite paper. Carbon paper will bleed badly. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know if the Michaels paper I bought was maybe carbon paper and not graphite, but it is a messy paper, so be careful with that. Erasing pyrography is difficult. We talked about that. One way is to, to lighten the burning, is, uh, lighten burning correct mistakes or make highlights on wood is to use the side of a blade to gently scrape away the burning. Now, I don't like doing that, especially with live edge wood. I never know how delicate it's gonna be and I'm afraid it's gonna chip away and you're gonna be able to see it. But otherwise, you can use a little bit of sandpaper as I showed you to kind of lighten something back up, um, okay? Uh, it's also a good idea to rest your eyes, take a break from a particular piece if you're struggling with it. It's amazing how fresh eyes will find solution find the solution faster than the tired ones. But the other reason for that as well is what I learned is when I do a lot of pyrography back to back, especially in the winter when it's already heat inside the house, it's very dry, it will dry your eyes. Um, so again, be careful with that. Maybe you need to wear uh, those protective goggles and that'll help you, okay? So those are some uh, some normal tips, some, uh, some other things to think about if you're working around children make sure that you turn off that heat um, that you know they they don't get anywhere close to that when you're not working with it kids are going to pick up anything they see right you should never burn on medium density fireboard that's mdf don't ever don't even think about it not even outdoors it's very toxic and its fumes if inhaled can cause cancer and other serious health problems um, when sanding make sure you use a dust mask probably again use it when you're burning and uh and then i think that's it that's all my tips for today so i hope you've enjoyed this demo uh, i hope it helped you at least a little bit if you are interested in more uh, learning about this i can do a second demo just send me a message if i get a couple of requests i'll be glad to do another one maybe i can even again demonstrate using more color meanwhile please follow my facebook page which you're currently on tutoring art um, you can also look at my website, which is tutoringart.com. You can reach me by tutoringart at gmail.com and also on Instagram, tutoringart. So I'm Vivian Davis. Thanks so much for uh, watching today and have a great rest of your day. Bye.